today it's bloody freezing it's two degrees and i'm out on a full-on sports bike yes this is a full-on sports bike this is the energica ego this is a 215 newton meter 175 brake horsepower 0 to 60 in 2.6 second super bike the only thing with this machine is it's electric oh. no 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 don't be like that this is a this bike has proper racetrack pedigree this bike is 80 percent the same as the machines running around in the new moto e moto gp championship so this is a proper sports bike we're going to take it out today in two degree temperatures we know how the cold can affect electric vehicles let's see how it affects this how the energy could cope with these extreme weather conditions so stick around stay tuned grab yourself a cup of something warm because you may need it i certainly do and chopsy roll the intro So stepping aboard the Energica, I mean, I think, before we go on, I think this bike comes with all these stickers from the factory. This has got the special pack on it that puts all these stickers on and stuff, but uh, it looks good, doesn't it? We'll do a proper walk around in a minute, so don't pay too much attention just yet. To wake it up, you hold the brake and you push this here, and you get the go light come on. Now this bike also has a reverse gear and a slow speed forward gear. I think if you hold that down again, for five seconds we go into the reverse hello we are reversing nice little touch isn't it bit of reverse listen to that <laughs> where's my v4 engine notes the sound is all a little bit more milk float than superbike but apart from the noise so getting on it ergos, it feels quite wristy. It's, it's a fair amount of weight on your wrist. It's a proper sports bike position, this. The pegs aren't too high. The pegs are reasonable. The seat is beautifully sculpted to my bottom and very soft. The seat feels really nice, actually, but you're, you're locked in. You can't move back. So if you're going to go into a tuck on this, you, know, you can't get right back to do a tuck. I am locked in. I think it'll be all right hanging off the side. We'll see in a minute, or as much as we can when it's only two degrees power whoa oh she started squirming then she started spinning up it's got uh, traction control of course and i don't know what level that's on as it's two degrees or could even be less than two degrees i better just see what's going on there but she definitely tried to spin up a little bit there lost a bit of traction it's got a ton of power apps the pull is unbelievable absolutely unbelievable that whoa it's fast and in this position this sports bike position obviously you've got weight over the front so if you're holding the front down a little bit but i can see already it's trying to wheelie the front is coming up a little bit there the brakes <laughs> the brakes are really nice there this is a proper thing this is a proper sports bike feel to it oh that's loads of power considering it's two degrees and the battery performance will be being severely impacted by the temperature that's sticking out some torque <laughs> whoa yeah this ain't slow this this is a proper this is this feels like a proper sports bike okay before we get entirely carried away let's just go through some of those specs so this is a 215 newton meter 215 newton meters of torque this engine pushes out. <laughs> That's Rocket 3 torque levels. So incredible amounts of torque, which of course on electric is available immediately, in theory, you know, that, that, that power is available as soon as the motor starts spinning. But what I've seen from power runs in on these bikes, if you were to get 215 horsepower instantly to the back wheel, I don't, you know, no traction control system could handle that. No tyre could handle that. So the way they map these is a bit of a mystery, but I've seen some dyno runs on earlier Egos. And it looks like you don't get full power. It's sort of a slow ramp up of that torque. So they, they, they hide, they, they, <laughs> so they actually limit that torque a little bit until you're going faster, basically because you know it would just be spinning and it would be it would tie itself in knots this is exciting this isn't just a 
all the, you know, most of the electric bikes I've ridden in the past, yeah, the Rebel, I could tell, was a rider's bike. Yeah, that's the, the Rebel's the naked version of this, so I've reviewed that little card at the top, but this feels like it's a proper sports bike. This isn't just your happy shopper electric to get you to work and back. This has got serious performance to it. Right, I'm tempted before I go any further just to check what the traction control and stuff's doing. I'm just going to pull in here without dying and just see the traction controls on. I've got it in the sport mode and everything. But let's just check we've got traction on. Traction control, we've got yeah, we've got it on, it's on level one, which is probably the minimum amount of traction control. When it's two degrees out, I'm going to take it up. I'm going to go level four. A few stats before we go on. The bike had 95% battery power when I left my house. I've done 6.2 miles and I'm at 89% now. Obviously, these conditions are going to really drain that battery. But this bike does come with all the fast charge and everything like that. So as part of this video, I'm going to charge this up. I'm going to find a charger which will just let me pay the fiasco i had with the zero if you cast your minds back guys if you haven't seen that video i borrowed the zero sr s f srs i think it was and i had a trying to charge it. it was just a nightmare i couldn't find anywhere where you could just pay with your card you had to pre-register and have all these apps absolute nonsense i've been told if you go to the right garages now you can just pay with your bank card as if you were putting petrol in your standard combustion bike so we're going to test that out and this has got the fast charge capability so i've been told probably not in these temperatures but you can charge it from empty to 90 percent in 40 minutes so that's reasonable it's reasonable it's yeah it's got a load of go absolute load of go the brakes brembo brakes brembo master cylinder it's got a lovely feel to those brakes feels very much like the uh the RSV4 I rode the other day, lots of initial bite, you know, it's a heavy machine this. I guess the downside with electric vehicles at the moment is those batteries are heavy. This bike, that weight of it I think is about 260 kilos, so, you know, it's a heavy machine. It's 60 kilos heavier than an equivalent sort of litre sports bike, you know. Riding it, I can tell it has got a bit of weight there. And to change direction, you do have to use sort of lever pressure on the bars. You know, with the naked, with the naked electric bikes, they can put a big wide handlebar on, and you can just use the leverage to get it to turn. With a sports bike, where you've got the clip-ons, yeah, they are quite wide for a sports bike, but you've still got a lot less leverage than the naked. So, to change direction quick, you've got to give it a fair bit of counter steering. But the f what with weight comes stability, and so far this feels quite a stable bike. A little lump in the road here. Wait! Yeah, traction control pulls it back. I can tell with the traction up, actually, it's not releasing as much of that power. It's it's curving it back a little bit. But I'm going to leave it on this traction level just because we could. it could be ice and all sorts out today. So, And the temperatures are really low, so let's just be a little bit sensible. Oh, but it's still got a kick. An incredible amount of kick. Also, it's got heated grips, so I've got the heated grips on. My hands are nice and toasty. So you've got a bit of heated grips. But I can tell you straight away that even in these really cold conditions, you've still got loads of... You know, it, the bike's releasing that power. It's not holding the bike back. Well, well it, it, if it is, it must be bloody mental if you take it out when it's dry, when it's warmer, because it's incredible the power it's got when it is uh, cold even. Yeah, it's not until I get into sort of a bit too fast that when I give it some, you sort of run out of legs a little bit. So higher up the rev range, it does feel like it's running out or higher up the speed, it's going faster. But it's getting you to those speeds so fast. It does feel weighty around the bends and I think probably I could do with having a play around with the suspension. It's got, I think, 43 millimeter Marzocchi forks on and the rear shock is all fully adjustable of course you know this is, this is a premium bike the rear shock is uh bitu i've heard of them before but i don't know how you pronounce it i'll put it on the screen a bitu something as i always say all sports bikes must come with cruise control and this one is no exception it also has heated grips and cruise control set oh there we go 29 miles an hour as well i can bring the cruise on under 30 miles an hour so through towns and stuff cruise control like it how'd you turn it off uh, 
touch the brakes. That's why you got to touch the brakes to turn it off, but who excuses it that? Overtaking Grunt? Oh, it's ridiculous. Wow. Nearly wheelie past him then. That's incredible. It's so fast. That pull it's got when you open the throttle. feels nice in the corners actually. Like I say, you can tell the weight's there, but get your head around the weight, the riding position, the, you know, the feel, I say the suspension could use a little bit of a tweak maybe, but it feels decent. It feels decent, it feels stiff. You can have some proper fun on this, you really can. This is a proper sports bike. This isn't a happy shopper. This, this is a Moto E race bike. 90% is a Moto E race bike. That is really cool. This is exciting to ride. It's not just, oh yeah, it's fast, it's a one trick pony, it's just quick. I could see myself wanting one of these. This does, I could, if I had the space and the money, the horses also love them. If I had the space and the money, morning. It's a nice quiet one for you, this one. <laughs> no problem. If I had the space and the money, I could see one of these being in the garage. Okay, a bit of a novelty factor maybe, but it delivers on performance, excitement, engagement. This is, uh, this is very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's very nice, it's so stable. In big sweepers like this, you can get it to lay down quite nicely. Other way, you can move around on the seat fine. There's plenty of grip under the tank. <laughs> it's got that go when you open it up. Brakes are lovely. It's a proper performance machine, this. Right, as I did with the uh, Zero review, I'm gonna do a little 0 to 60 test on this. I've got my Draggy, which is here, which is a GPS um, for drag racing, basically, a GPS speed recorder. This only clips onto to something metal, which obviously the tank's plastic, that's plastic, but the frame is metal. Let's connect to it. Connecting to Draggy. We're connected. Let it do its business. And then we we'll do a little bit of a 0 to 60 test on this. The battery's already gone off its best, so it's going to be better. As the, obviously I've said about the cold weather severely impacts these, but energy could say 2.6 seconds is possible we're going to get nowhere near that obviously with a big fatty on like me as well but let's see what we can do now ideally on here i'd have my ultimate add-ons phone on here so i could look at things like apps to find petrol stations unfortunately the only way to mount it on this is with a stem mount and i don't have the adapter which goes quite as small as the stem size on here but that's what i'd recommend if you've got one of these you need your phone mounted here so you can find gas stations, well, gas stations, electric outlets, um, but I don't have the size for this particular bike, it's a bit small, it's got a bit of a small hole, not used to having such a small hole, but uh, Ultimate Add-ons will do one which fits this, so phone mount solution for this bike, Ultimate Add-ons. Right. Traction level one, cover the rear brake, ready, one, two, three, go! <laughs> oh, the Oh, blimey, pinning it from standstill makes the front come up straight away. That was quite disconcerting. disconcerting. Let's have a look what she did it in. <laughs> Let's get the phone out. What was that? This is pretty good. 0-63.81 seconds. That was 3.81 seconds. It says it's invalid because it was slightly downhill. A one degree downhill slope will let it off. 3.81 seconds that's incredible at this temperature wow that's impressive 3.81 seconds i think i'd struggle to beat that on any sort of petrol bike by the time you got to slip the clutch and stop for wheelies and that was just a first attempt with the wheel coming up that's fast 3.81 seconds in two degrees of heat that is impressive wow geez so there she is the energy ego Ego, ago, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. This is the RS version. Probably should have mentioned, this is the RS version, which is the top spec one. You can see this bike has splatterings 
of carbon fiber all over it even the uh the clock stay down here is carbon fiber carbon fiber down here carbon fiber under tray which is looking very messy because they were doing burnouts on this bike on an airfield last week because it's in a game the sound from this has gone into a game because there's a new game coming out with electric bikes in and they didn't have any sound of them so but anyway that's, that's that's another story so the front end we've got the brembo calipers not the latest stylemas but these are still very very good calipers you've got the marzocchi forks which actually feel pretty decent hiding beneath the fairings of course you've got all the electrical gubbins there is the battery sitting pretty behind the fairings what i do like about with the, the sports bike version is you really can't tell by looking at it that it's electric not really but the actual look of the machine looks fantastic i think all of these stickers are actually come fitted these this isn't something which has been added on here these are actually how they come if you get this version this has got like i think they call it the track fairing pack or something and that version comes with all of these stickers and stuff it's still got those johnny five-esque sort of headlights that the rebel had and a sort of a pointy snouty face i mean it's not i'm not overly sold with the front end how pretty it looks but it looks different it looks does look very different and i'm all for some things but look they could have just done a copy but it does look a bit different but from the side i think it's got some really nice lines here we have the motor here and there's also a transfer box on these so they've got like a little gearbox a two speed sort of gearbox i think it is and there is actually oil within this transfer box which you have to change every twenty thousand kilometers or something so there's a little bit of oil in it this has the 21.5 kilowatt hour battery so this is like the best battery you can get really at the moment the biggest capacity battery which is available is i think it's at least eight kilowatt hours above what the zeros do so you get a much bigger battery in the energy bikes it is chain drive so it's not belt it is chain drive so there we go the energy ego let's jump back on have some more fun i've got to be honest this <laughs> i'm really liking this i'm really impressed with this bike i have to say and i've ridden other electric bikes in the past but they've always been felt a little bit budget from the actual bike perspective they're not budget because they're extremely expensive but all of the cost is going into the electronics the battery and there's never much left for the suspension you know the, the, the actual bits that matter when you want to ride a bike and enjoy the bike the Energikas, the Rebel was the same it's the only ones I've ridden which are really engaging they're really good fun to ride as motorcycles whether they're electric or not they're good motorcycles and I think that's the thing with these energy gears and because they've been racing these in the Moto E Championship they've got a bike now which has got a decent chassis it's got decent suspension you know it's actually set up to handle it's got some pedigree this bike it has race pedigree and I think that's what's important and you can really tell that not only is it mentally fast when you open the throttle yeah it'll run out of puff at 150 it's restricted to 150 who cares who wants to go over 150 you can't I'm not ready to invest my own money in electric. Being honest, you know, it's not quite there for me, but I ride this and I'm like, well, actually, what is stopping me now? If you can charge the bikes relatively quickly, you get at least 70, 80 miles range, ridden hard Sunday morning riding, and then sort of 120 miles if ridden a bit more sensibly. That's reasonable distance, and if you can charge it up, quickly we'll see what the charging's like now see if that infrastructure's caught up with the with the actual bikes but this is very very interesting this this gives me hope that you know when the combustion engine does finally disappear if it ever does you know there's other alternatives with hydrogen fuels etc and synthetic fuels but if the combustion engine does one day disappear that electric is now getting to the point where it is a very very viable option and this is a really viable option this is a great fun bike it really is and uh, yeah i'm no longer worried about the future and i know people will be oh it sounds horrible it sounds like a milk float it does i know you, you can't you've lost what you have lost with this bike you've lost the noise I mean that's irreplaceable to some people the sound of a motorcycle and i get it you've also lost the gearbox 
I like going up and down the gearbox, you know, you've lost all of that. So you've lost two major things from the engagement and the fun of riding a bike. But everything else with this bike is up there to, to make up for it. It's got incredible performance, it handles, it stops. You're just missing that little bit of engagement from the noise and having a gearbox. Let's pull over here and try and find somewhere to charge. Now I've got 54 miles left, 72% battery. I've not been out long, I've been blatting around, I've had fun. I want to find a charger now, just to see how long it takes to charge this back up again. So give me a jiffy. So this is that map, which is great for finding you know, the nearest charge points. I've put some filters on here. I want to be able to pay with my debit card, which is one of the things, and the connector types. I want the, uh, the CCS combo, I think it's called. I could be wrong on the connection type, so let's just, I think it's that one. Apply that to my filters. My nearest charging point is uh, eight miles away in Lip Hook, by the look of it. There's one in nine miles away in Emsworth. Some connections are already charging. These are available. There's two of the charge points I want in Emsworth. I'll go to that one. It's got toilets, they've got a calf. Oh, this is sounding perfect. Take me there, please. There's a speed camera. There's a, there's a speed camera here. There's a chat with a speed camera, mobile speed camera. 30 minutes away. Let's give it a whirl. Thank you, Mavis. Mavis will guide me in. Oh, it's taking us back up the hill climb as we're going towards the charge point. That's always... I'm not going to argue with that. Another go up the hill climb. Two in one video. The throttle response is nice. Smooth, actually. Power! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very good, you know. Lays down on its side beautifully. Lovely bit of dollop of power coming out the corners. You could be smooth with it. You can't, you know, it's not all about masses of jerkiness. It's very smooth and refined, the throttle feel. Brakes are lovely as well. Even turns in under, even trail brakes all right. The, 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 the dynamics and the chassis on this, that's lovely. That's that Moto E racing pedigree for you. Get stuck behind a couple of those four wheel shit boxes. You can squirt past them in no time. Overtaking Grant! Jeez! Power! <laughs> the downside with electric vehicles at the moment is, of course, all of that technology comes at a price. And this is a very expensive motorcycle. It is, I think it starts at £23,000, and I think this RS version is a, starts at £25,000. So it's expensive, you know, this new technology is expensive, but it's the same money as a Ducati V4S, you know. Premium motorcycle, it's premium motorcycle money. It's got a lovely finish, you've got all the carbon on this, but it's not Ducati V4S quality. You know, it's nice, it's not Panigale V4S nice on the quality front, but what you do have to remember with electric is, of course, at the moment, who, ha who knows what's going to happen later on when they start taxing it, you know, more people are using it. But at the moment, it's around about a penny per mile, you know, for, for fun. So you, the bikes are a lot of money to initially outlay and buy, but then once you've bought them, to, the running costs are very, very low. So you've got to bear that in mind. It's weird not to have any vibrations through the bike. You're normally riding a, a petrol bike, you've got some sort of vibrations, whether that's sort of a straight four sort of buzz or a a V4 sort of burbly vibes. There's n there's nothing really on this. I, all I can feel is the tarmac. There's no engine noise or, or vibrations to disguise the, how the tarmac feels. And that's quite incredible, actually. I've never ridden an electric bike where I can really, you know, it's been set up for performance, and I can really feel that tarmac. That's really nice, actually. You've got no engine vibrations in the way of that feeling. Oh, that's fast. I'm, <laughs> I'm really impressed with this. I have to say, this is the first electric bike that's got me thinking, I wouldn't mind one of these, actually. 
this is very very good you know I suggest if you're interested in electric if electric doesn't instantly turn you off then go and test ride one of these I tell you this is impressive Whoa! we got ourselves on the back of a bit of a ride out here by the look of it we're on the back of a, gr a group ride out if we start overtaking a few people <laughs> He's looking in his mirror thinking, what is that behind me? I can't quite make out what that is. I've never seen anything like it before. Noisy devils, noisy devils on the Super Duke. Come on, think of the environment, guys. <laughs> Even now we're down to, oh, indicators on, that's burning unnecessary electricity. Even now we're down to 62% battery. It's still delivering massive performance. So impressive. Okay, here we are at the BP garage. Mavis has guided me in. Well, I think we've got some charge points over here. Is this the chargers? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. This looks like fancy things. The pulse. Electric charging. Let's see how we get on here. <laughs> I've got no expectations that this is going to work, I have to be honest. She's at 47% uh, battery now. I ain't got a clue, so take me through this. I think that isn't the kitty I want. Is this the kitty I want? Yeah, that looks like the connections I need. Download the Pulse app. Oh my god. Do I have to use the Pulse app? Can I not do it without using the Pulse app? Let me see. God, this is not much flexibility in these cables, is there? Jeez. DC fast charge initialising. Ooh, it's getting exciting. Price for selected outlet, 42 pence per kilowatt. Card payment, start. Verifying. <laughs> this is getting exciting. This, this, could, this could be working. Preparing to charge, setting up communications with the car. It's not a car. This is getting exciting. This is getting exciting. We're doing, we're charging. 48% estimated to 80% charge in 13 minutes. We're charging at 22 kilowatts, 74 amps. 13 minutes. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. So I've got my shit coffee from the Wild Bean Calf keep you warm it's bloody freezing and we're still charging how are we getting on by the time i've got my coffee and come back it says we've got about seven six seven minutes remaining we're charging at 20 it's going up and down from 19 kilowatts to sort of 22 kilowatts it's up from 36 amps to sort of 74 amps so it's sort of fluctuating up and down um and the time's fluctuating up and down as well but it's charging pretty quick, so I've just bought, by the time I drank my coffee, I think it'll be 80% and ready to head off again. And actually on the pump, I call it a pump, <laughs> the charge point, it says I've been delivered, his 3.16 kilowatts delivered and we've been going for 8 minutes. So, uh, hmm, not too bad. Okay, so charging is completed, it took 17 minutes, it only goes to 80%. It must be something with these stations to try and keep people moving. You can only charge your bike to 80%, which is a little bit annoying. But 17 minutes, well nearly, eight, just under 18 minutes, and it cost me £2.32 to charge to 80%. <laughs> Very good. I'm not even finished with coffee. So now we can disconnect, like so, get rid of that. Back up there. And we're done. We're done. Let's head off again on the Energica. So I've got to say a massive thank you to Energica UK for lending me the bike. I can only have it a week because it has to go back for Motorcycle Live. They said I can have it for longer next year. And next year we'll take it out again when it's warmer and we'll also compare it directly with Greg against a, a petrol sports bike and we'll see how it compares back to back with something petrol performance. But uh, thanks for watching guys as always and I will see you on the next video. Cheers guys. Power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Oh, 
I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. 